So what's up, everybody? My name is Taurus, and welcome to the episode 11 of the Hustle Dua Show. My today's guest is Ed Rush, who's an expert in being fast, and not only in business, but also in real life. So if you've ever been in a sports car, you know, driving 120, 30, 150 miles an hour, and you think that's fast, that's not fast enough for Ed, because he flew uh, 1,000 miles an hour. Is that correct? Yep, at More one or less. point I flew uh, 1.5, a little over 1.5 Mach, which is 50% past the speed of sound, actually, yeah. Exactly, that's that's insane. So so you did that while <laughs> being a uh, fighter jet F-18 pilot, right? And uh, you've been to over 50 missions and two times in Iraq, and now you are a successful business coach, author, five times actually best-selling author, and uh, sought-after speaker, I've seen, right? And actually... Mm-hmm. Um, one of the great books you wrote is the last one. I have it right here, 21 Day Miracle. Uh, I have it on Kindle. I, uh, I read it while I was on holiday in, in Bali a few <laughs> weeks ago. So that was a very nice read. And actually, it fit really well with our theme, you know, this whole 21 Day Challenges we do and stuff like yeah. that. But but actually, Ed, I wanted to start with one question. While I was researching, you know, uh, about you, you know, I, I found that you're you are a speaker, you're uh, you a coach, but then deep there in the internet, I found that you are actually uh, have a big passion for fishing. And, yeah. you, and you actually had a podcast, which was aptly named The World's Greatest Fishing Podcast. World's Greatest Fishing. Yeah. So um, it's interesting that you mentioned that. So yeah, it's been a few years since I did that show. So I got really interested in podcasting uh, probably maybe five years ago, something like yeah. that. And I thought, you know, I like to fish. I, brought, I used to bring my boys out. My boys are 11 and 10 now. And like, for example, in a few weeks, we're going to go up to Big Bear. We'll spend some time on the lake. We'll go fishing for trout, you know, usually just catch and release, yeah. uh, have a good time with the kids. And so I used to do a lot of fishing around San Diego Bay out in the ocean and stuff. I had a boat at the time. And uh, like a very dysfunctional entrepreneur, I decided to make a business out of my a hobby. Yeah. Uh, and it turned out... I had 52 episodes. It was the number one uh, fishing podcast at one point. Uh, still to this very day, I haven't done an episode in three years. Still to this very day, it has uh, over 4,000 downloads a month uh, on that Amazing. show. And, Amazing. Uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. And I actually got on Fox, a whole fishing show on Fox TV uh, that was made around me and the guy that I did the podcast with. So just <laughs> show that you can know nothing about a topic. Uh, and still be famous in a niche if you put your mind to it and use media really smart. But yeah, that was a little bit of an aberration. It's not really core to what I do, but that's funny that you found that when you did, did yeah, your no, research. No, that was funny. I was just, you know, I was curious why did you stop it? Because I think it had like a uh, hundred five star reviews, you know. So it seemed like it was yeah. a great, uh, great success. But uh, I guess, I yeah. guess you just moved on. So well, if uh, you know anybody who wants to buy a really successful podcast? It's, it's, it's. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> so. So I, I could potentially hand the keys to somebody who wants to uh, take over, and it, they'd have a lot of fun with it. That's so a good it. Cool. That's a good idea. Actually, <laughs> maybe there should be a marketplace for like uh, yeah. for for yeah. podcasts. You know, podcast yep. cemetery. All right, cool. Uh, and another fun fact. So another, uh, I'm just super curious. So did you know? And I'm pretty sure you, you knew that you have a DJ. It's the same name as you. Yeah. Drum, drum yes. and bass DJ. So do you get any fan fan emails? Yeah. So Ed Rush is actually the name of a of a of a. DJ band up in Seattle. The real name is, I think, Ben Settle, if I remember correctly. Uh, the only thing that we do is compete for YouTube space on on my name uh, and Google Google space for my name. I've done better in the past. Like used to type in Ed Rush and like they'd show up on page one pretty much everywhere. Now it's kind of a little bit mixed. I, I obviously am working against the crowd of people on Saturday and Friday and Saturday who are immediately uploading his videos to YouTube. So that turns into a search engine challenge. But uh, not to fear. I'm still working on, uh, you know, dominating the content online under my name. And uh, at least up until now, he hasn't hit the big time. So I think we're good on that. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I, th- I think you got a shot to be the the one and only Ed yeah. Rush online, at least. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, gotcha. Great. So, all right, let's get serious. So um, I, I want to go back to 2006. If you Or actually, you know what? Uh, I want to keep the tradition. I always ask uh the first kind of question to my guest is what's your biggest superpower so i want to know ed yeah. what's what is your biggest superpower yeah that was an interesting question when you mentioned it to me before there's a couple of things that i do really well so one of the things um that i've done successfully now for about 8 or 9 years is business owners come to me uh to solve big problems uh and i'm very uh i've i've had this ability of maybe the last 4 or 5 years kind of really hone this uh skill of being able to look at complex problems and see very very simple solutions most 
business owners come to me with about a hundred things they're doing uh, to try to get leads and customers and another maybe a hundred things that they're not doing, but they feel guilty about not doing. Uh, and when they leave the office with me, usually about five hours later, they have a list of two, no less than two and no more than four things that are their main action items. Uh, so in other words, when you wake up in the morning, uh, you can look at this list and know here's, here are the things that I need to do uh, today. And I know when I do these things, I'm going to be able to get more leads, more customers, more money and take more time off. And most business owners, uh, despite a lot of training, despite going to events and reading books, uh, we get confused sometimes at what we should do uh, in our own business. Uh, and I think that's been the most, the thing that I, I do best. Uh, again, looking at complex things and then finding really simple solutions. Most of my clients, when they get done with me, they look and they go, wow, I can't believe I didn't see that. You know, uh, truth is most business owners are too close to the business uh, to be able to see the simple solutions that are right in front of them. So that's probably at the top of the list. All right. So, so basically they need this helicopter view or, or <laughs> in other words, F-18 view from the top that, that you bring, yep. uh, that you bring, you know, as a, as a person from outside. All right. That's very interesting. So actually I want to, I want to go back to 2006. It's, it's, uh, it's the, it's the year as far as I know, when you finish your military career and decided yep. to basically do the stuff you're, what you're doing. So what's, how did you basically decide to, to do the stuff what, you, what you're doing right now? Yeah, I mean, I took a zigzag road. I think most entrepreneurs, when you look you look behind you, you see this really zigzaggy kind of road, like fishing podcasts and consulting and speaking and stuff like that. Uh, when I left the military back in 2006, I was originally going to be an airline pilot. I was going to go fly for UPS. Uh, that turned out to be not really the job that I wanted. So what I ended up doing was I wrote a ebook at the time. It was back in 2006 when you could buy ads on Google. Uh, and launched businesses very successfully with these little $40, $97 ebooks. And I wrote an ebook. My original ebook was actually a book on how to become a fighter pilot. Uh, I wrote it on a trip back and forth to Japan, uh, doing some military service at the time. Uh, I put it up online for about $24. The next morning I woke up and I had a sale. Uh, I actually called the guy the next day uh, from my driveway. I didn't even have an office at the time. I called the guy from my driveway and I was like so excited that he bought this course. This kid said, yeah, I read your I read your book all last night. It totally changed my life. Uh, and he was super excited. And it turns out he went into the Air, to the Air Force and ended up becoming a pilot, my, my first customer. Uh, and it was kind of neat, you know, because uh, it, doing the information marketing business, you have some people who are happy, some people who aren't. It's just the nature of the business. And I'm really glad my first customer was somebody uh, who was that thrilled. And so that little business, which I started to make enough money to buy a computer. Literally, I wanted to make enough money to buy a $2,500 Dell computer. Uh, that business turned into about a six-figure business uh, in about three years. Uh, I started another information marketing business. My dad is a well-known basketball referee, so I started selling products and services for basketball referees. That turned into a six-figure business. The next thing you know, I'm off speaking at these events. I'm up on stage and sharing my story. People would come up to me after the event. They'd meet me at the back uh, after I get done speaking and they would all ask me, how can I hire you to work for my business? And I didn't know how to do that at the time. At first I said, ah, just take me out to lunch, you know, and I would do what I called free lunch lessons where uh, someone would buy me a burger and I would, uh, you know, give them advice that they would never implement because, you know, when people don't pay, they don't pay attention. Uh, next thing you know, I'm charging $2,500 a day. That was my real first paid client. And it was $5,500 a day. Then it was $10,000, $12,000, and $15,000, and $20,000. I've done now deals uh, exceeding $30,000. I've done a $70,000 deal. So uh, six-figure deals with companies on retainer. And so my fees have grown as my wisdom has grown, really. Uh, but but in the core of it, I still uh, have businesses online. I still uh, run my speaking business and my products business and my consulting business. I think it's important if you're going to be teaching people how to do things that you're actually doing them in the real world. There's a lot of theory out there. There's a lot of fluff. There's a lot of made up make believe stuff that people teach that like uh, have never really done. And I think it's important to stay in the trenches uh, and to do it with a level of speed and precision so that you're not your life isn't completely dominated by your business. And so I'll give you an example this week uh, today, uh, which we're, we're recording this on a Tuesday. I'm in the middle of a day of recording a lot of content uh, tomorrow. Uh, I've got some more interviews and some clients on Thursday and Friday. My schedule is completely clear. Now, one of those days I plan on being a writing day. One of those days I will probably take the complete day off and, and uh, actually just go play golf, I think, is what I'm going to do. Uh, because I believe in the importance of a strategic sprint, getting things done fast, being very strategic about your time, but also strategic rest, uh, being able to give yourself and your emotions and your brain and your subconscious mind uh, and your body the time to recuperate so that you can get ready for another run.
Mm -hmm. All right, that's uh, that's super interesting. So it seems like that you know once you decided to put your military career on a side and start running these businesses uh, for you know for the book fighter jet training and uh, uh, and helping your dad basically with his products and stuff like that. So you had this talent somehow, right? Uh, well, yeah. How, how, yeah, how did you? I, I, how did you like? Did you had any business experience before, or you just? How uh -oh. did you manage to turn into six figure business? Yeah, I mean, I had some teaching experience. So I was in the military, and I did a lot of teaching, but I had no marketing ability. I didn't know what a, the internet was barely. Uh, I didn't know how to market online. Uh, there's a couple things I did really well. Number one, uh, I invested in myself very early on in some really good teachers. So I bought uh, some products from some folks that were very strategic, and then I joined some coaching programs. Uh, and started working with people because my goal was to be successful as fast as I could. Uh, I wasn't trying to be cheap on my way to success. That's one mistake that I see people make all the time uh, where they're just trolling the internet, trying to find free information. So uh, for example, one of the people that I um, am friends with that I absolutely love is a guy named John Lee Dumas. You're familiar with John uh, because the reason I'm on this show with you is you heard me on John's uh, podcast. Well, when I first started getting into podcasting, I went to John who I knew and I'm like, man, what, what do I need to get started? And he told me about a resource that he had. Uh, I immediately paid him for it. And I got in there and I devoured the content because uh, I believe in not wasting time. So I don't want to troll around for free stuff and get free advice from broke people. I want good advice from good people. So when I started out, I didn't know anything. Uh, but I got good advice from some uh, people very early on. I worked with folks like Perry Marshall, uh, who's a Google AdWords expert, just a brilliant guy. I actually turned into a really good friend and ally of mine. I worked with a guy named Dan Kennedy and Bill Glazer, who I learned a lot of marketing from. Again, uh, Bill's an example of a guy that I took some courses from. Eventually, he was in a coaching program. Now, I consider him a close friend as well. We were just on the phone uh, yesterday. And so I've I've had an opportunity to work with some of the best minds in the business. I paid them for their time. Uh, and then uh, the, get the information and then implement it as quickly as possible, uh, which brings me really to the next point, which is you got you have to if you're if you want to be successful first, you can't be cheap on your way to success. Get good ideas from good people, pay them and value them for their time. But the next step is actually even more important, which is you absolutely need to implement what they're teaching. And then the next step after that is even more important, which is you need to adjust for market conditions because look. Just because something worked in a how to be a fighter pilot market doesn't mean it's going to work over in the basketball referee market. You have to take it and adjust it for the market, which is one of the biggest mistakes that marketers make is you get great ideas from people. You have these opt-in pages and these sales pages that you know you get out of click funnels or Kajabi or lead pages, and they work amazingly well over in this market, but you need to take it and adjust it uh, for your market. And the tendency sometimes you get frustrated, you know, when you're like looking at everyone around you and you see the success that that they're having. Well, part of the reason is you got to continue to adjust your specific market uh, to, to your message. And really, uh, Taurus, that was like a maybe two or three or four year learning curve for me, kind of growing my businesses. Uh, but man, once I got that and once I understood how to communicate a, a message effectively, I went very quickly from six figure businesses to seven figures. Uh, and it's kind of been that way ever since. Amazing. Amazing. So so the formula is simple. Invest, invest in yourself. Uh implement the stuff you learn and then adjust according to marketing conditions or you know even i'm i'm, I'm like i read your book uh you know 21 day miracle and uh, i like that there was a lot of also life advice you know not only not only for business but basically you could also you know do this stuff take this theory basically of investing in yourself learn stuff implement it and then adjust to yourself basically you know on anything so uh, uh where is the book yeah anyway so i want to <laughs> Go go to the topic of this twenty one day, you know, and and like, as as you mentioned, uh, uh, I was listening to a podcast with you with uh, with JLD on Entrepreneurs on Fire, and uh, you know when you started speaking, and even the even the name I think of the of the episode was how to achieve anything in three weeks. Yeah, uh, I was like, wow, this is exactly what we do, you know. So just to give you a little yeah. bit of context, you know, we we do this twenty one day body and mind challenges that people can take to develop a good habit or eliminate a bad one. Yeah. And that's that's super 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 similar, you know, to what you wrote in that book. And uh, for everybody, I will put the link definitely in the show notes. But this also could be found at edrushbook.com, right? That's the yep, one. That's, that's the also one. Bit, that's that's also the one behind you. That's super nice. Yep. So, yeah. So uh, and by the way, I put it at the lowest price I could put it on Amazon, which is ninety nine cents. I don't make money. I I've chosen not to make money for my books. That's not a money maker for me. I make yeah. a little bit make like 30 cents a book or something like that. But I make the price as low as possible because I want 
people to do three things. Number one, I want them to read it. Number two, I want them to implement it. And then I want them to adjust to market conditions and continue to grow themselves. So yeah, I appreciate that. Exactly. No, no, that's, that's amazing actually. It's, uh, and I think it's, even though it's you know that cheap, so not, nobody has uh, a reason not to buy it. <laughs> but also, it, it creates this that it, just because it's not free, you know, you're not giving it away by going to edrushbook.com yeah. and then put in your email. I will send you this free ebook because what you said is maybe even if this is only ninety nine cents, but you already feel invested. You know, you already have a higher yep. chance that you're gonna read it. So anyway, so uh, give us a little bit of the rundown, you know, of this idea of twenty one day miracle that you have. Yeah, so I mean, the biggest lie in personal development is that the tortoise beats the hare. You've heard this. I mean, ever since we were kids, we grew up and we're like, you know, slow and steady wins the race. Uh, and that story was made up by very slow moving people uh, who once wanted to keep you down. Uh, the truth is, it's speed uh, and specifically speed to market that actually wins the race. Just the other day, my son, my 11 year old son, Jack, who is actually out in our garden, which is right past this window that I'm looking at right now. Uh, he, he, I was, I was, as I was there, he said, uh, I walked outside and he said, Hey dad, check it out. I have a rabbit cornered and he had him cornered inside this fence. Now rabbits can get through like the smallest little spots. And that rabbit that was cornered in the fence went underneath the fence and then went sprinting down the driveway. And I tell you, I only saw it for about a half a second. Cause it was like, boom. Now you put that rabbit next to a turtle. The rabbit will win every single time. Like Las Vegas wouldn't even give it a betting odds. It's because rabbits are fast. And if you look at the people who've been most successful in the world today, it's because they build their entire lives, or in certain cases, their entire businesses around what are called strategic sprints. Um, and so I have two theories. One is strategic sprint. One is strategic rest. I talk about both of them, actually, uh, in the book. But if you can combine your efforts into a short period of time, focus on one or two main things that you want to accomplish. I don't care if it's, if it's money or business or getting more leads or customers or growing a podcast or launching a book. Uh, 21 Day Miracle, which is the book that we're talking about, was I went from idea to best number one best-selling author in actually it was, it was 20 days. I planned to do it in 21 days, but we got there actually one day early. Uh, and, and it's a good book. It's over 200 pages. It's well edited. It's well written. So it's not like it's just like jammed uh, together. It's something good, but it's done in my format of a strategic sprint where you can get things done fast. And so for you, as you're listening to this podcast with Taurus and I, um, you as an entrepreneur, business owner, career-minded person, you have goals and dreams and you want to get someplace. I mean, I don't know anyone, uh, at least on the entrepreneur side, who's content with where they're at. Uh, and you're not going to get there unless you develop some kind of a plan to get you there faster. Now, there's one way that's the slow and steady wins the race way that will will get you to your goals when you're about 370 years old. Or there's the fast way uh, where you cut th through some of the learning curve, uh, you cut around some of the corners, you devise and you develop a series of 21 day sprints to get you to your goal. And again, I don't care if it's money or mindset or business or leads or customers or happiness or uh, or you getting um, uh, uh, in back in shape or you know connecting with a, a, a person that you love or building better relationships. Siri thinks that I'm talking to her right now. Um, so, which is funny because I have my phone off almost all the time, and still, Siri still thinks that I'm talking to her. So, yeah, um, they're too smart sometimes. So, <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, but you, when you build these, what you find out is that you can achieve things a lot faster than you thought you could, and you can definitely achieve things mm -hmm. faster than everyone else said you could. Uh, and that's the whole theme behind 21 Day Miracle. Exactly. So, why do you think, uh, let's say, you know, people know about this, uh, you know, or let's say there's enough information out there about any single topic, right? And and you said it to yourself that uh, there are a lot of people who take the information but uh, don't take that next step, which is implement it. Why do you think that's it, uh, uh, you know, that's happening basically? Yeah, I mean, the reason it's very simple. The reason why is we live in a fallen world where things don't work perfectly all the time. <clears throat> and so, for example, I use the point of like a marketing uh, opt-in page or a sales page or a lead page. Well, when you build one of those and you put it out into the real world marketplace, things don't always work the way that they should, right? You know, you have to make adjustments and changes. And so what happens is we get on our road to success and we've been to an event, you know, and like we got like so full of energy uh, and we feel so unstuck and we start down this road and we think, man, you know, millions of dollars, it's just right around the corner. It's going to happen for me probably this week, maybe next week. Uh, and what happens is you encounter an obstacle. And I'm not sure 
for you what that obstacle is. Maybe it's a loved one, your spouse or your parents or friends uh, telling you what you can't do. Or maybe, you know what, maybe you put something up online uh, and someone says something bad about you. Like, for example, I've got over 100 reviews for 21 Day Miracle and about 10% of those reviews uh, are uh, one star reviews from nasty people. I don't know, 60, 70, maybe 80% of them are five-star reviews. So I should be thrilled with that. But the fact is those one-star reviews kind of gets you down, you know, every once in a while. And I've known people who were so emotionally um, frustrated by idiots who have never, ever gotten themselves into the real world, never wrote a book, never cared to contribute. All they want to do is c criticize. And I've known people who literally shut their whole thing down because of criticism, right? So criticism could be a roadblock or it could be just failure. Like sometimes you try something, you try to close a deal and it doesn't work. You try to book a person for a podcast and it doesn't work. I've been trying for two years to book uh, a three different famous people for a podcast that I'm starting uh, and it hasn't happened yet. You know, so sometimes you'd like – you like hit these little roadblocks and what happens is failure minded people just stop and they're like, gosh, I'm such a failure. And then they turn around and go back to their cubicle and what they were doing. <clears throat> Success minded people hit a roadblock and they just make a left hand turn, right? They adjust and then they hit another roadblock, make a right hand turn, adjust, hit another roadblock, hit a right hand, you know, they adjust and adjust and adjust. And that's why in the beginning of today's show, I said, you know, behind me is a really zigzag kind of road. But the reason why is because it doesn't always, things don't always work the way that they're supposed to. So for example, when a missile comes off of an F-18, like for example, a sidewinder missile, which comes off of the right or left rail of the of an F-18, when that missile comes off, you know, it should, if all of the guidance systems were working properly and all the environmentals were perfect and the airplane that it was shooting at was flying a perfectly straight line, it should just come off and fly per perfectly straight to the target. Well, it never does. If you ever shoot a missile or if you ever see a missile that's shot, or if you YouTube uh, missiles being shot off an airplane, what you'll see is they constantly are making turns and adjustments on their way to the target. That's because the environmentals aren't the same. That's because your airplane might have turned a little bit while you're squeezing the trigger. That's because the airplane you're shooting at may have turned. And just like a missile, entrepreneurs, you're making always kind of making adjustments, right? The market changes, you change just a little bit. Things change, the environment changes. Like, look, if you're in the political world now, I have some folks that are that are uh, very active um, and running for office or even in office um, in the on the political side. Look, if you're in 1980 when Ronald Reagan was the president, and in 2018 when when um, Donald Trump is president, the political world is completely different. Like the way you communicate, the way that you need to work through issues, it's totally different because the world changes. And so, as an entrepreneur, you need to embrace that. Pull up your big boy or your big girl pants. Get ready for the real world. But you know what? When you get through that, you're going to look back on a life of success and having changed your life, but also changed a lot of other people's lives, and it will be worth it. Exactly. But uh, I think, you know, the key is also here is to start, right? Like if you won't start yeah. anything, you know, you won't have a chance to even hit the roadblock to adjust, to even have a chance, you know. So it's all about this, you know, this that's what we preach a little bit. This 21 days, you know, 21 days, three weeks out of 52 in a year. It's nothing to try out, you know, a new thing. Imagine you could... You know, by the end of the year, you could have tried 11 things if you tried one new thing every every month, right? So yeah, yeah. imagine how much stuff you could learn. You know, maybe you could really find your passion. Maybe you could really develop a habit that changes yeah. your life. I mean, it's, um, yeah. you know, people, just more people need to do more stuff. It's it's amazing uh -huh. for me why, why people don't. Uh, uh, I want to sp speak also about speed versus perfection, right? So there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people could say, ah, 21 days anyway, you know, I'm just going to touch the surface, you know, I'm not going to, I'm yeah. not going to go deep and, and I don't know, I don't even have time to go beyond 21 days. So I, why even try, you know, if I can't make it perfect, I'm not going to try. So what's, uh, what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, so first of all, uh, perfection is an ideal that you could try to strive to if you want to. It's just not going to happen for you. And I'll tell you, um, nowadays in today's marketplace, today's marketplace, it used to be the old marketplace was ready, um, aim, fire. Uh, today's marketplace is ready, fire, aim, fire, aim, fire, aim, fire, aim, fire, aim. Okay. And the reason why I say that is because the marketplace today is so constantly and quickly adjusting. Amazon right now uh, has over 3,000 teams. Uh, who are all simultaneously working on one small change to Amazon's uh, system and page. Think about that for a second. That means typically every uh, every few hours, there's actually an update happening on Amazon that's making them better. Think about that for a second. For a company that's probably going to be the first trillion dollar company, think about how quickly they can adjust. And you know what? It gives them the ability to put things on the page and take them off if they're not working, right? So uh, one of the best um, things like, for example, the book that I mentioned, 21 Day Miracle. I, 
I had, this was a fast project. I said it was 21 days. I actually had three separate editors, uh, two separate layout people and a web person all working this project simultaneously. So um, I did all, I did editing. There were two other people who did uh, content and uh, and the editing. Then there was a proofreader, right? Think about that for a second. All that stuff's happening simultaneously on a Google Doc where we could all work together. Um, after that process, after we went through all of it, after I launched the book, became a number one bestseller, I actually ordered a copy as a paperback. And I always do my final edit uh, as an author, I do it on the actual paperback and then I do it on the Kindle version on my iPad and I go through it and I look and read it on both formats because, you know, the layout looks different and everything. After I did that, okay, after I did all that work, all that editing, I still found a seven, exactly seven errors in the book, small little things like the, uh, one letter was capitalized, it should have been lowercase or something like that. I went back with my uh, layout person, I got those seven things fixed, uploaded it back to Amazon, it was fixed within a day of me uploading it, okay? And so the point is, sometimes people sit around, like I've helped now over 1,500 authors uh, launch their books and become bestsellers, 1,500. Uh, one of the biggest objections I have for my authors that I work with is they're like, yeah, but I need to make it perfect. And I'm like, no, you don't. Because here's the thing, you will work as, it lets, you're, you're gonna work as hard to get something to 95% perfect as you will to get the other 5%. You're actually gonna, let's say it takes you three weeks to get to 95% perfect. It's gonna take you another at least three weeks to get that last 5%. And so here's my rule. I'll get it to 90%, I'll launch it into the marketplace, then I'll fix the rest of the 5% while it's bringing in me money and leads and customers. And I'll tell you, I sold thousands of books before I got that edit up. I had not had one person mention the little letter that should have been capitalized, that should have been lower. Like literally not one person has, has said a single thing about that, okay? That's because that's not the point. The point is you wanna get your message out into the world uh, so that it starts to change the world, okay? And so if you're a perfectionist, you need to let that go. There's a phrase that I mentioned, a friend of mine named Bill Glazer. Uh, Bill taught me this 10 years ago. Bill said, you know, a phrase, good is good enough. Get your message into the marketplace. Get your marketing into the marketplace. Good is good enough. You can deal with the criticism. Look, every once in a while, somebody's going to tell you there's a spelling error on your website. Hey, at least they're reading it, you know? Okay, so every once in a while, you're going to get some criticism. My rule on that is about as long as, as long as the critics are about 8 to 12% of everyone else, you're in good shape, okay, because you're out there making waves and changing things, okay? So good is good enough. Get it into the market. Launch your podcast. Get your show. Look, you don't have to have a perfect background or graphics or be dressed properly. You know how to speak or ask questions. You're going to learn through the process. Like, Taurus, I guarantee you, when you first launched Hustle Duo, you were probably not as good as you are now, right? You were trying to figure things out, line some questions up. Look, if you listen to some of the best podcasters in the world, I listened to the first episode of the Tim Ferriss Show, and I've listened to a whole bunch of them since then. Look, if you listen to Tim, and he's got a very popular podcast, he wasn't all that great in the beginning. He really wasn't. He asked some questions that he doesn't ask now. There was a question he asked in the first few episodes where he, he would ask someone, who, do, who would you like to punch in the face? Clearly, that question did not resonate with his people and he stopped asking it but you know what if he waited until he had the perfect list of questions he would have never launched okay so when would now be a really great time to get your book or your message or your podcast or your vision out into the marketplace the answer to that is right now do it just go do it yeah you might fail who cares nine failures ten failures in a row finally you'll be successful and trust me it's a lot better looking back on those failures after you've had the money in the bank account or the success or the followers or tens of thousands of people buy your book or you get like right now, number one, for some reason I'm number one, my book is number one, the number one best selling book in India. Like, I don't know how that happened. I didn't even promote this thing. Like all of a sudden I looked up and I'm still, this morning I checked it, I'm still the number one best selling book in India. That would not be possible, okay? Unless I had actually just launched the book and got it out there and just said, you know what, heck with it. I'm just gonna go do it. Exactly. All right. That's that's great. So progress, not perfection. Better done than perfect. Uh, what else? I had I had one more of this. You know, pr proving this this uh, this truth. But uh, anyway, the the point is, start and learn. Right. So start and improve uh, as you go, that's rather it. than that's than it. than polish it. Yep. I remember actually, I saw it um, a while ago. Like this this picture, like this meme on the internet, where it said, "Oh, good were the times like 1998 when the websites." were actually done, finished, you know? You could say, okay, my yeah. website is finished, you know? Yeah, yeah. And now it's just never finished, you know? You, la you launch it, boom, next day you make you make adjustments. Yeah. Am Amazon has teams that makes constantly the adjustments, you know? So it's really it's really all about, all about the progress, but you won't have that if you don't start. Um, 
one uh, last question before we go to the rapid fire round and i would love to uh, you know i'm really interested in 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 your experience uh, about this because uh, you mentioned i think also on uh, uh, on a podcast with, with uh, john lee dumas that you went for 21 days uh, tech <laughs> fast and yeah. uh, it's super interesting also i think for our audience because one of our challenges that we're going to launch in a couple of months will be 21 day unplug challenge it yeah. will not be as extreme as I think uh, as you did, uh, but I mean, people can always do that, your version as well, which we're going to hear very soon. Uh, but, you know, our idea is that at least you would, uh, you know, allocate, you know, at least you would cut your plug yeah. time by 50%. You know, maybe you would not grab your phone first thing in the morning. You know, maybe you would uh, actually the last, you know, three, four hours before going to sleep, you would shut off the internet and read the book. You know, all this kind of at least yeah. small changes yeah. because we are just plugged in so much. Uh, every day but uh, anyway tell us tell us about this uh, this trip you had 21 day no no technology yeah. here's the thing so technology is a tool um it's not a owner and you're not a slave okay so most people and i mean this most people um are complete slaves to the technology that they carry around in their pocket Me. the way that i could um easily prove this to you um is if the average person were to take their cell phone and leave it at home and go away out for a day um, I guarantee you're going to be checking your pockets or your pocket purse or your purse or whatever um, about 50 times because you think you lost your phone. I have people I know uh, who leave their phone at home and they feel their leg vibrating all day long because their phone, their leg is used to now vibrating because of a phone. Okay, and so um, and so I make technology my 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 um, servant, not the other way around. Um, I love technology. We're on technology right now. I use it uh, effectively in business, but I also disconnect uh, for long periods of time. And so there's full days uh, during the week where I'll have my phone completely off. And when I mean off, I mean off, off, like the phone is actually off. Um, I have, have times where I leave it in my room and I come back that night uh, and I wake up the next morning and finally turn it on uh, 24, 36 hours later. And so uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, I went on a, um, uh, well, actually it was exactly a year ago. I went on a 21 day uh, uh, tech fast. I actually sent my phone to my assistant. Uh, I put a out of office reminder on my email account. I made sure that all my clients I was working with knew uh, that I was going to be gone for 21 days. And I uh, left on a Monday and I came back on a Sunday, 21 days later. Uh, I actually disappeared up into the mountains. Um, I um, have an amazing wife uh, who um, is incredible at doing what she does. And I had uh, a way to communicate with her. And we had um, about that ahead of time. And it was um, a way for me to completely disconnect. Uh, and in a certain cases, completely detox. Uh, not only did I detox from technology during that time, I was able to detox uh, from some relationships that weren't exactly where they needed to be, that were kind of uh, causing me a little bit of stress at the time. Um, and I was able to just completely disappear. Uh, I came back from that time, rejuvenated, rested, but I came back with a subconscious mind that was working incredibly powerfully. Uh, in fact, the idea for this book, 21 Day Miracle, came on the 21st day. I was driving back home from the mountains. I was about four hours away from home, and all of a sudden popped right into my head as an idea for a book. The title and the subtitle all came simultaneously. It wasn't like I had been thinking about them, uh, but it just goes to show when you spend time disconnected, the ideas really start to flow. The best way I can describe this is uh, if you've ever been uh, just falling asleep at night, like just when you're about to go across the like threshold, you know, from being, a, being awake to asleep, a lot of times what happens for busy folks like us is just in that moment, uh, you go, oh man, I forgot that I was supposed to call Bill. Or, you know, you have like left the socks in the dryer or something like that. The reason that happens is your subconscious mind has been trying to speak to you all day, but you've been so busy uh, and you've been so connected. Uh, and you filled up all of your dead space with technological time that you actually never give your subconscious mind time to give you ideas or solutions to problems or new ideas or book titles. Uh, and so I recommend turning this thing off. I go with this thing on airplane mode probably at least half of my days uh, or my hours, maybe, maybe more than that. Uh, and then a lot of times during the day, I will just take some moments to pause. Like, for example, I've got a chair sitting right here in my office that looks out uh, over the view here uh, that I've got in San Diego. Uh, and this, just this morning, I sat in there for about 20 to 30 minutes, and I just spent some time thinking. I actually just sit in the chair. I do what I call think praying, um, where I'm kind of praying and thinking and it's kind of kind of communicating and talking to God a little bit, asking for some solutions to some problems. Well, when you start your day that way, you come up with some great ideas, really, and you're able to communicate in 
actually effectively. But what happens is most people, every moment that they have, every break that they have, uh, every minute of time that there's a little bit of a pause, most people immediately pick up their phone and start scrolling through Facebook and they never give themselves time uh, to rest. So start short, start with 10 minutes. Like I'm talking about maybe a minute. Uh, there's something I do uh, now every maybe few hours uh, that I call um, just a new technique that I'm using. It's not even in the book. Uh, it's called a one minute calibrate. So for example, in the F-18, when I was flying uh, fighters, there's this inertial navigation system uh, that's called a, that has a system called ring laser gyros. These are three gyros. One goes this way, one goes this way, and one goes this way. It's the X, Y, and Z axis. Uh, and those gyros can tell you anywhere the airplane is upside down, uh, pointed down, up, pointed down. It always knows where it is, perfectly positioned. I'm telling you, this thing knows down to about five meters where that airplane is in the world, in the sky. It's amazing. But for the first minute, when you first start the airplane and you turn that thing on, for about the first minute, maybe a minute and a half, you actually have to stay, stay completely still. You can't even roll forward an inch or two. You have to stay exactly where you are while those gyros begin to align themselves with where they are and where planet Earth is and where all the satellites are. And so as an entrepreneur and business mo owner, uh, or career-minded person, those little pauses are really important. And so, for example, right after this interview, I'm, I guarantee I'll do it. I've got a chair that sits right here. My, my, I have a stand-up desk over here. Uh, and I'll probably get done with the interview, change my shirt, probably back to a T-shirt. I'll sit down in that chair, I'll look at my clock, and I'll just sit for a minute, my feet on the floor with my eyes closed, and I'll just take a breath, and I'll just pause. I'm not thinking about something. I don't have to, like, put meditation in there. If I be, put some gratitude, that's fine. Whatever you want to do. But just one minute, you will be amazed at how those little minutes, um, when you just start to do those, they bring a lot more peace in your life. But they also bring a lot more speed, ideas, and productivity. So just try that. Just space. You just you just give yourself space, you know, space yep. for, for, for new ideas to come, for creativity, for, you know. <laughs> It's it's amazing, yeah. Like my my friend, we we were just chatting in our you know little friends chat that we have. Uh, he just spilled some water uh, on on his MacBook, and you know it just got got busted, and <laughs> it happened a couple of days ago, and and uh, you know now we are like, hey, so so what's up? What's happening? You know nothing. I'm still I'm still you know figuring out, still fixing it, but gonna buy a new one. But I just realized how much time in a day it is now, you know, like when, when <laughs> yeah. he has uh, basically no computer, just, just smartphone, which is still, you know, technology, but still like we're not that used to like, you know, using the smartphone every single hour, whereas he's a, he's a, he's a IT guy. So he's in front of the computer, you know, 16 hours a day. Yeah. So, yeah, so this, uh, this definitely, I think is super useful. I'm, I'm looking forward myself. I have an addiction. I think as, as most of us, uh, I really have an addiction. So I'm looking forward to this 21 day unplugged challenge that we're going to do. <laughs> And you know, just kind of uh, open open my mind a little bit. See 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 what's yeah. in there. See what's in there. <laughs> yeah, and start and start with some very. Uh, so, for example, start with um, uh, one hour, like one hour a day where it's completely off. You can't touch it. Uh, build up to one day. Try to do one full twenty four hour day. What I mean by that is, um, leave it. Turn it off when you go to sleep. Leave it off in the morning. So just wake up with an alarm clock or something else, or just wake up whenever you wake up. Uh, take your entire day and then the next morning you, you're allowed to wake up and turn it off. Uh, another little tool that you can use if you want to uh, is most people, which is ridiculous when you think about it, but most people, um, the moment they wake up, actually roll over and check their text message and then their email uh, or Facebook or something like that. Like, think about that. Like the moment you wake up, it's one of the freshest moments for your brain. It's one of the most peaceful moments in your day. It's one of the most stress-free moments. Just take a time. I mean, just take two or three minutes there just to be paused and be thankful um, to just rest in the day and go, wow, this is great. Like I'm super excited for today and maybe think about some things you want to do. Uh, and so if you want to train yourself to do this, there's a way to do it. You take your phone and you actually uh, don't sleep in the same room as your phone. Uh, you put it someplace else, down in the kitchen or someplace else, plug it in and leave it be. Uh, and uh, technologically, it's great to be away from all that electricity anyway because you don't want to sleep next to that stuff biologically. But also spiritually and emotionally, it's really important uh, as well. Now people are like, how am I going to wake up? First of all, you'll wake up. Like Seriously, if you need to wake up at 6.30, your brain will wake you up at 6.30. But the other thing too is on Amazon, they have these things called alarm clocks. There are these little plastic things that have lights on them that you set the actual time on. And because no one buys them anymore, they are super cheap. Like you can get them for like five bucks on Amazon. So one click buy uh, on your phone, uh, alarm clock on Amazon, plug it in. It'll sit over there in the corner and tell you what time it is. And it'll make a horrible noise when to, and, and you'll uh, guarantee to get out of bed. I will, but you'll be yeah. more 
because you don't have your phone next to you. Okay, so there. I want. I, I wanted. To, I wanted to ask: Is this a new invention? This alarm clock? Uh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> is this a yeah. new gadget? Is it by Apple or? <laughs> all, the, all the alarm clock companies have gone out of business, and the only ones you can get, I think, are cheap Chinese imports. But still, you can find an alarm clock. It, they'll, it'll work. Does the job. Does the job. All right. Exciting. <laughs> yeah. So so start small. A couple of minutes in the morning. Then yep. yeah, uh, go up. You know, maybe one hour. Maybe the first hour you don't take the phone. Maybe the last hour of the day you don't you don't yeah. you don't use technology. Start small and then uh, and then just build it up. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Ed. So uh, now it's time to go to the rapid fire round. Are you ready? All right, let's do it, man. Yep. Let's do this. All right. So the first question: What's the personal habit that made you a better person? Uh, I'd say the one that I just mentioned, which is the t time alone thinking. So I, I just spend, like I said, at least a half an hour a day. Uh, in certain cases, two, three, up to six hours of my actual work day, uh, just thinking, and that's that's been an incredibly powerful habit for me. Amazing. And what's the next habit you would like to develop? Uh, so this year, I've tried. I try all different kinds of things. So one year, I try to wake up around six, six thirty every single morning, work out. Uh, I pray for an hour, work out for half an hour, and then eat breakfast and get to work. Uh, this year, I'm trying a different one where I'm actually uh, about 75, maybe 80% of my nights, I don't set an alarm at all. I just wake up whenever I wake up. Uh, and some mornings that's 5.30 and some mornings that's 9. Uh, I'm blessed to have a wife. We homeschool our kids, so uh, we don't have a have to like run the kids out the door in the morning. Uh, and so she gets to sleep in too. She's pregnant now, which helps that as well. Uh, but um, but man, I'll tell you, it's been incredible for my body and my soul just to be able to like sleep and get a good night's sleep without having to be tired all the time. And I'm never tired. I don't drink any caffeine, zero caffeine. I quit that about three months ago. Haven't turned back. But part of it is just because I'm getting sleep. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Simple hacks. Sleep people. <laughs> uh, sometimes we just forget the simple <laughs> things that are in front of us. Uh, yeah. So uh, an internet resource that made your life more simple. Um, I'm currently using a calendar scheduling system called Calendly, which I think you use too. If I remember, that's that's probably the one that I um, scheduled. That's probably the one that I've used uh, the most. And then the second one I'll give you is Dropbox. I put absolutely everything, and I mean everything, on Dropbox. Like for example, the computer that I'm looking at right now, I just got back in the mail from Apple. I lost this computer completely for three weeks. I had a backup. Uh, but one day the backup wasn't even working. Uh, and a Apple and my wife, who took the computer and both said, you know, you're probably going to lose everything on the computer. I said, fine, I don't have anything on the computer that's not on Dropbox. And so I put everything, I'm talking about everything, videos, audios, um, pictures, everything that has to do with my business or life, I put it all on Dropbox. And then if you lose a computer like your buddy did, uh, nothing is lost except for the computer, the hardware itself. So there's another one. Gotcha. Yeah. Cloud cloud definitely saves a lot of, uh, yeah. it's a little hassle. Awesome. Uh, and a newsletter you don't delete. Oh, that's an interesting question. So um, the one that I really like, so news, uh, getting the news nowadays is really hard um, because all of the media outlets are ridiculously opinionated. Uh, there's one news uh, service that I like. It's called Axios, A-X-I-O-S. Um, I find that they do a pretty good job just reporting the facts really instead of like uh, throwing opinions into everything like uh, and look i don't care what side of the political spectrum you're on fox or cnn or huffington post or whatever um they're all falling away in the sense that they've like completely chosen sides but this one i like reading because i can at least get some of the data without having to get all the emotion involved in it so axios news feeder and it keeps me from having to read the news all day i can just scroll through check out the 20 headlines that are important and move on Cool. Yeah, definitely. We'll put the link in the show notes. And the last question is the book that changed your life. Besides the 21 day miracle. Okay. So, um, man, just a bunch, I'll, I'll mention maybe, maybe, um, um, just a handful. So first of all, um, think and grow rich is probably the consummate entrepreneur sort of starter uh, place. If you haven't read that, that's a really good place to start. Um, I read a book called ransomed heart, uh, with, or sorry, wild at heart, which is uh, by a guy named John Eldridge. Um, it's mostly for men. So if you're a guy, that's a great book for you. If you're not, you could probably read it to understand guys a lot better. But um, Wild at Heart uh, it turned into a really good book. Um, and the Bible, I would say, I read that every single day. I know that sounds a little strange in today's culture, but um, my theory on ancient texts is if they're written a long time ago, 
and they've stood the test of time. There's probably some value in there. You might not believe everything that's written in there, but I, I certainly have found a lot of wisdom for life and an understanding of looking at cultures maybe 2,000 years ago, and you see the problems that they have there, and then you see the problems we have here. It gives you a sense of scope uh, and direction, and a lot of times, uh, as you know, uh, folks growing up in the world today, and and um, in a lot of ways, this is very true in America. We're very prideful about our culture, but there's a lot of cultures that have gone through history that we can learn a lot from. So um, there's three books for you. All right, that's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, no, no, of course, be always open-minded. You know, that's that's my take. Yeah. You know, you can, you can take something out of uh, any yeah. book, any piece you read, you know, just take something that's valuable. Great, awesome. Thanks a lot, Ed. Uh, so before we say goodbye, how can people find you online? What's the best way? Yeah, I mean, the best... The best way is that website that I mentioned, which is edrushbook.com. It's just my name, E-D-R-U-S-H, and then book.com. When you get there, as Taurus mentioned, there's actually two things. Uh, the first thing is there's a link to the discounted Amazon book. I made the price as low as I could. I have no choice on Amazon. If you do uh, have Amazon uh, Kindle Select, you, you, it is actually, you can read it for free. Um, I want to make my material available uh, to any, anyone who wants it for as low a price as, as possible. But when you go to that website also, uh, there is a place where you can click and put your name and email in. That gives you uh, a private login uh, to a membership site. Uh, that's the only way I can give you access to a membership site is by uh, putting your information in there. But I built a membership site for 21 Day Miracle. All of the resources and plans are there. So I've got 10 different plans that are downloadable. Uh, you can use it with your mobile phone or your computer. And I've also got a series of videos. Uh, they're about 15 to 20 min e minutes each, similar to what I'm doing with you right now, where I'm walking you through... Um, the steps on the 21 day miracle. I've made that completely free. Uh, there's no charge at all for your uh, podcast listeners, Taurus. So uh, when you go to edrushbook.com, there's actually two little buttons. One will take you to the book. So go grab the book. That'll help you. Uh, and then the other one, as a, just a bonus to you and a benefit, uh, you've got the ability right there to go to the membership site uh, and to interact with the content that's there. Because I find that people like uh, people read or learn differently. Some people like to watch things. Some people like to read things. Some people like to listen. Uh, and so I've given you the ability to learn and train on the material in all of those different ways. Uh, last way, by the way, my email address is actually hidden inside of this book. I'm going to tell you where it is because um, I, I was, I'm always interested to find out who uh, takes advantage of this. So like if you use the, um, if you use the front of the book, um, my, my business email address is support at edrush.com, and that's in the front. But back towards the back, there's a little thing that says hiring Ed to speak or hiring Ed for consulting. And my actual real email address is put in that book. It's interesting. I've sold about 15,000 copies of this book, and I've only had about five people find that <laughs> back there. So it's kind of hidden, but I just thought I would do that just to see if the go-getters would get it. So that's a little, little Easter egg for you. If you want to communicate directly with me, I do answer my emails. I do not answer them every day because I'm not on my computer every day, but I do answer them about every week. And if you have any questions or comments, you just want to share a story or get some advice, there is a way to communicate with me as well in the book. Amazing. Yeah, I think I think I think I noticed that email at the end of the book, but we already were in touch and already had yeah, your we email. Talking, so, yep. so exactly. Yep. So I was like, okay, that's <laughs> that's that's great. <laughs> Awesome. So everybody, um, let's give a big thanks to Ed. Uh, head over to um, edrushbook.com. Purchase that book uh, as I did. It's really, really nice. It's really worth, especially if you know if you're part of our community. If you're really doing this 21 day challenges we do, this book is exactly a great supplement to the whole thing. You know, uh, we do we do as a community and membership. Join join the membership and get all the information from Ed right away. All right. All right, Ed. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, I really enjoyed that. And uh, I wish you all the best with, uh, you know, everything what you have going on in your life. Taurus, you're the man. Thanks for uh, leading your community the way that you do. Let me know if I can do anything for you as well. And um, I was really glad to be on the show. This is quite, a, quite an interesting uh, and fun time. So thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to the episode 11 with Ed Rush. You can find all the things, all the links he mentioned in the show notes of this episode by simply going to hustleduo.com forward slash Ed. And of course, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It would really help us. So I appreciate you guys. And of course, if you want to try something new in your life, whether it's uh, for your body, you know, for trying something new for the fitness, try something new for your diet, or maybe you want to try and learn new things, how to develop your mind, you know, boost up that intellect and emotional intellect and just try out new things, you know, expand your horizons and get out of the comfort zone. You can take one of our 21 day challenges for body and mind and you can find all of them on hustleduo.com. So thank you very much. 
Once again, I appreciate you and I wish you a wonderful, wonderful day.